Thank you for joining us for Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future, a 13 Investigate special. I'm Joe Bartels. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll take an inside look at the life of Tony Shea, one of the most influential figures in Las Vegas history and his impact on the area. Tony Shea had changed the trajectory of Las Vegas for really years to come. We'll also take a look at his time spent in Park City, Utah, as well as the fire that claimed his life. We'll also tell you about the future of his fortune and how it impacts Las Vegas. That's all right now. Tony Shea made a fortune to find the definition of what normal is. In fact, he encouraged people to embrace their inner weirdness. And even at an early age, he knew he was destined to change the world for the better. It's a big undertaking. It's, uh, it's exciting. Tony Shea made his mark by being a disruptor, a changer, and before it became a thing, an influencer. The late Zappos CEO saw downtown Las Vegas as a field fertile enough to grow something big. This could actually be an opportunity for us to uh, not just have a campus, but actually help revitalize downtown Vegas. This downtown turnaround story begins decades earlier. The son of Taiwanese parents, Tony Shea, had big expectations to live up to, starting at just nine years old. My parents wanted me to get good grades and eventually become a lawyer or a doctor. I had this idea of buying a lot of worms and then I would grow my own and then I could eventually sell worms. What happened? Maybe a week or two later, all the worms had escaped. So that was the end of my worm farm business. Shea delivered on the good grades and he ended up in the Ivy League, graduating from Harvard. From there, he launched an internet company called Link Exchange. It bloomed into a blooming basement business, but Tony wasn't fulfilled. Why not? It wasn't a fun place to work at anymore. So you sold it. How much did you get when you sold Link Exchange? $265 million. Tony left and started off in a new direction, eventually selling shoes as CEO of Zappos. His influence turned the notion of customer service and the treatment of employees upside down. Free food in the cafeteria, full free medical benefits, and free shipping on all shoes for customers. The business model and culture earned Zappos the title of one of the best places in America to work. Growth soared, and in 2009, Amazon bought Zappos for $1.2 billion. Tony stayed on as CEO, but he had bigger plans. I think it'll be, I mean, not just here, but yeah, I think uh, the whole area around here will be completely transformed. So. It'll be a very different downtown Vegas. Tony turned his attention to downtown Las Vegas. The idea was to breathe new life into the area, making it walkable, family friendly, and a place to see and be seen. And that spurred on a lot of other development. I mean, down Main Street, um, from the city hall perspective, and then really on Fremont East, because you know Fremont East didn't exist when uh, when uh, when I first came down here, and uh, it really changed things over. Las Vegas casino owner Derek Stevens says millions of investment dollars poured into downtown Las Vegas with Tony's vision. By 2012, Shea sunk 350 million dollars of his own cash, and the so-called downtown project was born. It was a revitalization effort to create a hub for entrepreneurs, along with new businesses like the Container Park shops and restaurants. In 2013, Zappos relocated to their new headquarters into the old Las Vegas City Hall building. I think if anybody says that they weren't trying to at least um, uh, catch up to what Tony was doing downtown, they, they're lying. Former casino executive Kip Kelly watched the project grow and existing businesses tried to keep up. Almost immediately, the next bullet point would be like, well, how do we get Zappos involved? Because you knew if the Zappos employees bought into what you were coming up with, um, you had tapped into that culture or you were considered cool or downtown was going to accept you in some way. This independent report commissioned in 2017 showed the downtown project was responsible for more than 400 construction projects, topping $200 million in economic activity each year and created more than 1,500 jobs. We never competed in any way, but we had a lot of discussions over the years uh, about you know what's the next thing how can things get better things like that how can we grow and you know tony was a, a pretty amazing relentless uh, growth growth orientated guy growth helped many minority entrepreneurs and women business owners because of him we actually established a culture in our staffing company so it was like wow there there has to be a lot of people like me because i mean he was so down to earth he was always trying to help the community 
and made time for the community. But by 2014, Downtown Project ran into money troubles, and some of the businesses they invested in shut down. There were layoffs, too. Critics began questioning the treatment of existing downtown businesses and the gentrification of neighborhoods with soaring home values and rents in areas where most people were living below the poverty line and the majority were people of color. Tony took a hands-off approach from the day-to-day -day decision making at Downtown Project, which rebranded to simply DTP and continued to invest in businesses and projects. The party continued as well. The massive music festival, Life is Beautiful, financially backed by Tony Shea and held in downtown Las Vegas, attracted thousands of young people, but also ruffled residents downtown. Noise complaints, traffic, and some seniors battling the crowds to access their homes. It, it's, it's very hard. It's, it's rough one, especially those older guys. You know, not very many young people in their building. It's mostly older people, senior citizens. The growth of downtown pressed on, and now places like the Smith Center, the Mob Museum, and a new Las Vegas City Hall are reality, a trajectory now changed for decades to come. Tony stepped down as CEO of Zappos in August of 2020. No additional details were given, but we learned Tony wasn't done. A home shopping spree, wild parties, and law enforcement interventions were ahead. That's next in our part two of our series, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. Joe Bartels, 13, investigates. We'll be back with more of this 13 Investigates special after the break. Looking for more Las Vegas content? Download our KTNV 13 Action News app on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV streaming device to get the latest news and specials on your time. For more information, visit ktnv.com apps. Welcome back to this 13 Investigate special, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. For more coverage, visit our website, ktnv.com backslash Tony Shea. The pandemic upended business as usual for a lot of us, and for Tony Shea, it was no different. He left his company and his job, but records show he went to the Utah mountains and snatched up millions in real estate. In the snowy peaks, where ski lifts and steeples seem to touch the sky. The allure of Park City is clear. It draws 600,000 visitors in a normal year. And in 2020, it was home briefly to billionaire Tony Shea. He invited others along for this new adventure. We were just touching base and she said, hey, um, I'm in Vegas now. Tony is stepping down, I think, from Zappos and He's uh, going to be creating a whole new thing up in Park City. Why don't you guys just come up and get out of the heat? Musician David Perico says the invitation came from former bandmate Rachel Brown, who happened to be Tony Shea's girlfriend and right-hand person at online shoe retailer Zappos. He says in August last year, these tour buses were sent to pick him, his wife, and fellow bandmates up in Las Vegas for the trip to Utah. Uh, just a little mini vacation, three-day vacation. Um, Rachel made sure we had accommodations. We had our own condo. Uh, we did some hiking and then we would meet every night with Rachel and some of the other uh, Zappos employees that were up there for dinner. David says Tony Shea's Utah home and acres of land were filled with breathtaking beauty. Property records show it was purchased for almost $15 million in July 2020, just before Tony's quiet departure from Zappos. Gosh, it had to be... I mean, I would say at least 20,000 square feet, you know, big kind of A-frame style off the back of it was a huge deck. And then you overlooked the lake and then um, big area where the living, quote unquote, living room was. That's where the grand piano was set up and we just hung out and, and you know, we played some music and jammed together. The trip included hot air balloons, hiking and sightseeing. But he rarely saw his host, and David noticed something else at the Mountain Mansion, a policy in which cell phones were taken away from guests inside the home. Also... And of course, the place was heavily um, fortified with security. I mean, everywhere you went, there was security. That was one thing I did notice. I mean, like, wherever we went. And we had to be tested for COVID before we could even go there. Records show Tony went on a shopping spree, buying several properties around Park City, spending millions on homes, condos, and his large mansion, generating headlines and online buzz, prompting questions about what the former Zappos CEO was up to. Some say it was the beginning of something big. You know, putting a lot of people to work, um, 
creating a lot of jobs, creating a lot of things. And Park City itself is just a beautiful area. He was also making a name for himself with law enforcement. We obtained multiple reports from the Summit County Sheriff's Office. In June, a friend reported Shea broke several things inside a home and threatened to hurt himself. Gentleman landline that has a friend, 1422 of Higher Avenue, that's having some sort of a breakdown. When I told him I was sending police and then we stage an ambulance, he said never mind and would call back. However, I did advise him we were going to send somebody regardless. He is worried about his friend seeing us, officers in uniform. He was refusing to give me much information now. Police arrived and Tony was taken to the hospital, but the friend warned if Tony were released, it would, quote, be a problem. In early August 2020, authorities were called to Shea's Mountain Mansion again for a welfare check. Ten days later, another call into authorities. This time, a friend reported Tony was increasingly paranoid and they were concerned for his safety, indicating he was using inhalants. But his security detail told authorities everything was okay. The following month in September, reports show a party got the attention of neighbors and authorities. The report detailing a party going on for 40 straight days with loud music and flames shooting up in the air from a contraption. Authorities were called twice more to the mansion in the days immediately after. Well, I'm going to uh, call my producer. Yeah, um, so if you're recording me right now, like, stop. I don't <laughs> want to be recorded. Um, more than a month after Tony's death, his security detail still guarded the mountain mansion and followed investigators from our sister station around Park City. But you're you're in my personal space, sir. That's okay. And if you continue to do it, I'll it's have a to call it's, it's a public place. The guard eventually referred 13 investigates to a public relations firm. Repeated requests for interviews were declined. Still, Shea's time spent in Park City was positive for some. The mayor of Park City declined to speak on camera, instead releasing a statement saying in part, quote, he may have been new to our community, but he had a large and immediate impact. Through the depths of the pandemic closures and difficult reopening period, he generously and quietly bolstered many of Park City's small businesses. It was a lifeline to at least a few of them. Thank you to Tony for the kindness he showed our community, and we are sorry we were unable to know him better. I just was amazed that, you know, the generosity of Tony, you know, and via Rachel, you know, said, hey, I'm going to send you these buses. And what really stuck out was, to me, knowing what he did here in, in Las Vegas, it was going to be like maybe a second kind of uh, positive outcome. At, in, in, in Park City. After Utah, Shea traveled to Puerto Rico, then another quick stop over in New London, Connecticut. What happens next is still shrouded in mystery. Joe Bartels, 13 Investigates. We'll be back with more of this 13 Investigates special after the break. Looking for more Las Vegas content? Download our KTNV 13 Action News app on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV streaming device to get the latest news and specials on your time. For more information, visit ktnv.com apps. Welcome back to this 13 Investigate special, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. For more coverage, visit our website, ktnv.com backslash Tony Shea. Tony Shea was always an ideas man and never satisfied with traditional business customs or norms. But his quest for happiness took a dark turn during a brief and final stayover in New London, Connecticut. In this report you're about to see, the fire connected to Tony's death burned for a full 10 minutes before it was noticed. On the banks of the Thames River, about a two hour drive from New York City, Tony Shea and others had just returned from a Puerto Rico trip to the home of Rachel Brown, a longtime Zappos co-worker and friend of Shea's. But on the cold Connecticut night of November 17th, 2020, Shea would not stay in the luxury five-bedroom home, opting for a shed around the side of the house. My understanding of why he went in the shed that night was because he had the, uh, an argument with the owner of the home, and then he left the home and went outside. Tony's staff was concerned for his safety. Temperatures dipped around freezing. At one point, staff noticed a candle had caught a small portion of a blanket on fire inside the shed, which Tony put out himself. According to this lengthy and detailed report from fire authorities, around 1 a.m. on November 18th, staff discovered Tony lit a plastic bag on fire inside the shed. An exterior security camera with audio helped investigators piece together what happened next. 
You're going to smoke yourself out, staff told Tony. That's poison, the camera's audio picked up. It's poisonous, but I used it to light a fire, Tony replied. Conversation with his staff, they brought in a heater because they thought he lit the fire to keep warm. Fire officials say a propane heater which gives off a tasteless, odorless, and in large doses lethal carbon monoxide was brought into the confined shed to keep Tony warm. It's an inappropriate place to use that. Those particular heating units, just from the nature of how they combust the propane, will produce carbon monoxide. So using it in an unvented area could be dangerous. According to investigators, staff began checking in on Tony every 10 minutes. At 3.15 a.m., the report says the security camera picks up light smoke wisping from the shed door. Tony is seen putting the propane heater outside the shed. Then moments later, Tony brings the heater back inside, shuts the shed door, and locks it from the inside as thicker smoke and embers can be seen. At 3.20 a.m., Tony's brother Andrew Shea knocks on the shed door and tells him it's time to leave for a trip to Maui. Tony says to come back in five minutes, and Andrew goes back inside the house. A minute later, the carbon monoxide alarm begins to sound. At 322, the propane heater tank begins hissing and venting pressurized gas. At 324, Andrew Shea and staff realize there's a fire and the rescue attempt begins. 911, what's the location of your emergency? 500 Pequot Avenue. We need help as soon as possible. Someone's locked in a room with a fire. The 911 call goes from calm to increasingly frantic. Joe, Rachel. Rachel. Okay. Rachel. They really need help. Is there is there a code to the storage room? Okay, what what's Tony is locked in there. And the situation turns to panic. Please hurry up. Please hurry up. This is urgent. This is Yes, really ma'am, I realize Please that. The fire department are all coming. More 911 calls come in. Hey, we're not getting a response from him. We're not getting a response from okay, him. Okay, who who is he? Okay. Um, his name is Tony. I'm actually a nurse that traveled with him and gives him an ID. Police body camera video shows smoke pouring from the shed and Tony being pulled from inside. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. The report notes Shea was found about three feet from the door and inside the shed there were several Whippet brand nitrous oxide chargers and whipping cream dispenser and a marijuana pipe and Fernet Branca liqueur bottles and several candles. The interviews with the, the witnesses said Tony does enjoy candles and that's been well reported. It reminds him of a, a simpler time in his life is what the common trend on the answers to that was. The report concludes the fire cause is undetermined. There are four possible scenarios that could have developed into this fire. The first being a carelessly discarded smoking material. Second, there was a propane heater being used in the area of origin that was close to combustibles. Third, there were candles in the area of fire origin that could have caused the fire. And fourth, could have been a careless act or even an intentional act by Mr. Shea. Police say they don't intend to file any criminal charges in the fire, and authorities say if new information comes to light, that might change. Authorities noted in their report that Tony Shea could have been intoxicated or impaired, and that could have prevented him from being able to escape. They are still waiting on toxicology reports and a final determination from the medical examiner. Now, even in Tony's death, he left a positive impression in Las Vegas. What the future holds, that's next. Joe Bartels, 13 Investigates. We'll be back with more of this 13 Investigate special after the break. Looking for more Las Vegas content? Download our KTNV 13 Action News app on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV streaming device to get the latest news and specials on your time. For more information, visit ktnv.com apps. Welcome back to this 13 Investigate special, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. For more coverage, visit our website, ktnv.com backslash Tony Shea. The vibe of downtown Las Vegas is alive and thriving. East Fremont Street is in the middle of a major enhancement project, and Circa Hotel and Casino just opened up amid the pandemic. There is much, much more on the horizon. The growth of downtown Las Vegas continues despite the recent economic downturn. New apartments are going up in the shadows of the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. There's optimism even more things are coming. And the city is working 
on so many other great initiatives around Cashman Center, trying to bring in an MLS soccer team, uh, building up new office space, attracting new technology and new businesses to downtown. Um, I really think that downtown is going to be uh, you know, growing exponentially. Carolyn Wheeler is with the Downtown Vegas Alliance. She says downtown's prime position links back to Tony Shea's involvement. But Tony Shea had such an impact in downtown. He really took um, his vision and his enthusiasm for the area and was able to help diversify the downtown economy. She points to the Arts District as a source of pride for the city's growth potential. There's also the Smith Center for the Performing Arts, the Discovered Children's Museum, the Mob Museum, plus new residential development percolating. If you think about people like Derek Stevens, if you think about Elon Musk and his conversation about bringing the Hyperloop down to downtown. Um, again, the residential developer, Sam Cherry. Casino owner Derek Stevens says there's fortune in the future for Las Vegas. His new resort, Circa, is the first one built from the ground up in downtown Las Vegas in the past 40 years. It opened in late 2020. I, but I'm pretty bullish about what's going to happen in the second half of 2021. And I definitely think 2022 is going to start just, it'll be roaring everywhere. If Elon Musk and the Boring Company expand to downtown, it would create an underground Vegas loop that includes Allegiant Stadium and the airport. Cherry Development just finished Share Downtown, a 63-unit apartment building in the Arts District, a sign of a bright future for downtown Las Vegas, and many see Tony Shea's lasting legacy for decades to come. All mourn the loss of Tony. Oh. The great thing that he did was he really was able to build leaders in our community. Still, there's a lot to sort out. DTP, the revitalization effort launched by Tony Shea in 2012, has vast holdings with murky futures. Current assets include the Downtowner Hotel, Corduroy Bar on Fremont, Gold Spike, and Downtown Container Park. 13 of Eskates has learned through hundreds of pages of court documents, Shea's family has filed a notice of sale for more than 100 properties in downtown Las Vegas. They include the Hydrant Club, Gold Spike, the current Zappos headquarters, the Container Park, and the Bunkhouse Saloon. Shea's personal financial affairs and his vast wealth of as much as $1 billion are a big question mark since there doesn't appear to be a will or any written instructions for his estate. Shea's father and brother are special co-administrators for his estate and will have to begin investigating his finances, which likely include real estate and business ventures. These two lawsuits have been filed against Shea's estate. They come from Tony's previous assistant at Zappos and longtime friend. The suits claim Tony was not close with his family. In fact, the paperwork adds Tony's brother Andrew was offered a $1 million salary in exchange for moving to Park City. The filings go on to claim Tony had agreements and contracts and are seeking money for breach of those contracts. We reached out to attorneys representing Tony's family and estate, but a request for comment was not acknowledged. There's several ideas being talked about on how to honor Tony Shea. There's already a mural that's been painted in downtown Las Vegas, and there's even a petition to rename parts of 6th Street near Fremont in honor of Tony Shea. Joe Bartels, 13 Investigates. What happens next after Tony Shea's death is complicated. His family at least signaling that they are interested in selling Tony's more than 100 plus properties in downtown Las Vegas. Some see opportunity, others skeptical. But either way, it seems that change is inevitable. And perhaps the passing of a Vegas visionary will lead to new inspiration in downtown Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us on this 13 Investigate special, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. If you missed any part of this program, simply download the KTV streaming app and watch it on demand. Stay with us for more news and specials after the break and check us out on KTV Streaming, Las Vegas News on your time.